Hey guys, it's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we are going to talk about the king of all exercises. Now this is an open-ended topic. Everybody has their opinion on everything. But in my personal opinion with world records to back up what I'm saying in this exact exercise, in my personal opinion, the squat is the king of all exercises and I'll tell you why. Lately I've been living like I can't take a loss. Deadlifts also can hold a very, very high rank in this. Maybe could even be number one. The reason I like deadlifts and it's hard to choose between deadlifts and squatting is because the deadlifts involve grip strength. Well, not these days much because everybody wants to pull with freaking straps, which is ridiculous. Just totally insane. But the point is, is the deadlift can be a viable answer for this as well. Because your grip, your back, your legs and glute strength, all of that. But the squat is still my pick and here's why. One, squats in the eccentric phase tend to build more muscle. So what you find in deadlifts is that unless you're doing controlled eccentrics, you're not having to lower the weight before you raise it. Now this can cause stretch reflex, Golgi tendons and muscle spindles to play a part. But I also feel that if we look at some of the best legs ever developed, they were developed with squatting type movements, not necessarily deadlift type movements. Let's look at Tom Platts, for example. Here's a video of him squatting 500 for reps. And I would consider him, especially at body weight, to have the best legs that's ever been produced in bodybuilding. Um, we keep going on and on down the road. You know, Arnold used squats, Franco Colombo used squats. Um, a lot of these guys use squats, but you didn't see him deadlifting a whole lot. So my thought process is they were onto something and I think what they were onto is they knew that squats built more muscle. So if your game is building more muscle tissue, I feel that squats can be superior to deadlifts. The next thing I like about squats, especially in my case, is squats test your courage. You know, when you pick something up and walk out of a rack or the monolith gets out of your way, you own that bar. I'll tell you for an example, I cannot squat without spotters and I'll tell you why. I am so tight from benching 600 plus pounds for so many years that I'm attached to that bar. There is no getting out of it. Meaning if I try to dump it off my back, it's probably gonna break my arm. And I can't dump it over my front because I'm not flexible enough to do that either. So the point is for me, the squats test courage. I know when I pick up a squat that my, not my life is on the line because I have spotters, but I really have to dig deep and make sure that I do everything I can to get it. And in my mind, I'm pretending that I don't have spotters, that it's just all me. That causes a lot of courage and a lot of self-discipline in my personal opinion, to do squats, whereas in the deadlift, if it gets in trouble, just let it go, right? You're not attached to it anymore. The squats, in some cases, you kind of own. Here's some variations that I think you need to have in the squat to make it the king of all exercises. I do not believe that free squatting all the time is the answer to this exact question that we're talking about. I think that variations of squatting is the answer. And a lot of that reason is accommodation. We talk about this a lot in the different videos, but once your body's adapted to a stimulus, it's gonna take more and more and more for it to do any more good. But in, the, in all reality, what if we just change the stimulus slightly? Now the body has to accommodate to a different load, therefore getting more stimulus out of less time, volume, and energy, which eventually becomes a huge issue. So what are my favorite ones? Well, obviously the free squat, right? So we're doing a free back squat. To me, that's a great tester all around. Most people utilize that that type of squat, it needs to be in your program. I wouldn't say all the time, like most people do. I would say that it needs to be in your program for advanced guys every one to three weeks and for intermediate guys every, every week to every two weeks. The next variation that I think needs to be employed in your squatting endeavors is a box squat. Now, a lot of people have gotten away from a box squat in the last, say, five to 10 years due to it thinking that, oh, that's only for geared lifters and whatever. Well. You know, if that was true, I wouldn't have broke all-time world records raw as well as equipped. We use box squats a lot, especially if somebody has a back issue or they're immensely sore. Separating the eccentric and concentric phase of the squat actually enhances timing and if done correctly, will actually make your free squat go up. So what are some ways that would be doing incorrectly? Well, you watch a lot of people on the internet when they do box squats is they're not using it to pause and sit. They're bouncing off of the pad. That is not gonna make a belt squat conducive for any kind of gains whatsoever. 
So if you're gonna use box squats, make sure you're pausing on the box. The next one that I like that could be used if you're by yourself and you wanna go heavy as hell and not get caught up or get hurt or get pulled to the floor is a concentric squat. <clears throat> now a concentric squat can be done either out of pins or out of chains. We prefer chains because the bar center of mass kind of finds itself with the sway. Whereas in pins, it may not find its center of mass until you lift off the pin, it could cause you to lift forward or backward. So what you'll find is we do it hanging out of chains. Now what I like about concentric squats is that you have no eccentric component. Therefore, you have to grind with all muscle strength and starting strength. So this is a great exercise for somebody trying to not only raise their squat, but also raise their deadlift. The last one that we'll talk about today that you don't see a lot done is a zercher squat. Zercher squats are really good, especially for tactical, because a lot of times you're gonna to have to be carrying things in that particular position. So what I find is a zercher squat's really good. The only problem with zercher squatting is it can be very dangerous on your bicep tendons and it can be really hard on your upper back. So I advise that you keep a higher rep range, lower intensity level on zercher squats and do not use them for 1RMs. At most, I would use them for something like a 5RM. The other thing that I would have as an example is when you do a zercher squat, Make sure you're doing it from the top of a rack and then going down and up. Don't try to pick it up from the floor in that position unless you're amazingly flexible because what you'll find is it's way too much back work for the average person. Now for tactical, this may not be a bad option to pull from the floor based on the fact that you're not always gonna have the best leverages in order to lift a patient or equipment up in a fire or a car wreck scenario. So I hope this helps a lot. If you guys wanna know where to put these, Come on to Train Heroic or Patreon and we can show you how these rotate in an advanced level with our fire departments and both what we do here at the gym. We hope this helps you guys out a bunch. And remember, squats are king, so raise them up and watch your leg development and your entire body development go through the roof. Thanks. Lately